as I was saying, um, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of uh, an ancient shepherd who's um, observing the night sky and kind of looking at, um, you know, you are <laughs> trying to relax after a hard day's work and you look at the stars and, um, and you recognize some patterns that occur day over day. And sometimes these patterns, some, they are moving things and um, <laughs> you can read about it in the module. What I want to move a little bit forward to is our, um, our place in the universe. So all these stars that you can see in the night sky and recognize as a distinct points of light as stars, they are, um, they are within our own galaxy. Um, the objects that are outside of our galaxy, deep space objects, um, the closest of them is something called the Magellanic Cloud. So uh, I know for a fact that I can locate it in the sky here. So let me use the search tool to actually, yeah, I was looking for this earlier. So let me, um, let me find one of these Magellanic Cloud. It's uh, named after Magellan. Um, I think he was a famous explorer. I, I don't know, I'm not a history buff, so I don't know. And I guess, so it's supposed to be centered in the screen, but I don't see anything. Oh, because I'm looking at the ground. <laughs> so let me turn off the ground briefly so that I can actually see oops, the atmosphere. Uh, actually, let me turn off the atmosphere so that I can advance the time later uh, without worrying about the time of the day. And let me turn off the ground. So if I go there, yeah, that's the Large Magellanic Cloud. And it's named as Large Magellanic Cloud because um, it kind of looks like a cloud. And I think it wasn't really until the 20th century that people realized that um, what this really is. Um, so I, I think even uh, back in the more ancient times, people knew that this was not cloud because it, even though it looks like a cloud, it uh, has that fixed shape. It's that shifting around like a cloud. Um, what we now understand these to be is this is a nearby dwarf galaxy. This is not within our own galaxy. I think there's a distance here. It's about, okay. It's about 160,000 light years away. And it's uh, another galaxy that is much smaller than our own. So it's a dwarf galaxy. And, and, and there's a reason this is called the Magellanic Cloud. The reason is um, because of how the geography on Earth works, many of the cultures are on the Northern hemisphere. And so from the perspective of those of us who are from Northern hemisphere, Magellan was really one of the first people who uh, noticed it on his voyage as he was, um, I guess he must have been circumnavigating the southern tip of Africa. And, and as when he was a southern hemisphere, that's when he could sit. So if we, let me just turn the um, round back on so that I can locate the, oh, wait. Can I even look here? <laughs> Sorry, I'm losing my place here. So let me, oh, let me actually put on equatorial, no, not equatorial grid, Achimoto grid, no. Yeah, let me not do that. <laughs> oh, I think I can do it this way. There's a... Professor? Yeah. How did they measure the distance of the cloud from us? Cause like, I don't know, it just seems kind of like, the only way I can think of is like sending a laser, but that doesn't seem very practical. It's a very good question. Something that we'll address in more detail in module four. So I'd ask you to hold off until then. All right. <laughs> yeah. I have a question. Oh, sorry. Oh, question? Oh, I thought I interrupted somebody. Um, I have another question about, this might be in other modules, but if there's like, planets in these other tiny galaxies and if we know anything about those planets so um i think uh, planets in 
stars outside of our galaxy. I don't think we've observed any because it's too far. I mean, but uh, if um, you might have uh, heard of exoplanets, those are planets outside of our solar system, and um, there's a lot. <laughs> now. I won't talk about planets at today's session because I want to focus today on the things that can be um, observed without much instrumentation. The methods that are used to, to detect exoplanets, it, it requires a lot of um, things that we will introduce over time, like a Doppler shift and observing the spectrum of a star, because most of these planets, in fact, even maybe all of them, we can observe them directly because one, they are planets, they don't emit their own light and planets within the solar system, we observe them through their reflected light from the sun. But once you are outside the solar system, any such reflected light would be too little. So, um, but in, within module one, we do cover planets within our own solar system and how ancient peoples uh, without any help of telescopes or instruments, um, recognize that they were different from uh, other stars that they see in the night sky. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so we didn't, so let me just turn off the ground again. Um, so this is where the large Magellanic cloud is. And you will see that, uh, I'm just gonna keep it here. I'm just gonna advance the time for about a period of a day. Um, you will see that these star uh, or the large Magellanic cloud, it never rises. It, uh, from the location of where we are in Alameda, California, about uh, 40 degrees north in latitude, this part of the sky in the southern hemisphere, a uh, good chunk of it, it'll never be in our sky. So uh, let me just move it a little bit faster. So that's as close to the horizon as this large Magellanic cloud gets. It'll never rise in our sky. So if you want to actually observe large Magellanic cloud or any of the other constellations in the southern hemisphere of the sky, you have to travel to a location that's further south. So as a example, I think, uh, Sydney would be one of the locations in, wait, Sydney, am I misspelling it? Um, let me just put in Australia, I don't know. Um, oh, I was misspelling Sydney. So from one of these locations in the Southern hemisphere, you can now see, uh, let me, uh, now you can see large Magellanic cloud in your own sky. Uh, so with the ground on, this is uh, well, with the atmosphere back on. Oh, we are back in the day. Let me just go back to the night. So, okay. So, um, so this is the simulated view of the large Magellanic cloud from Sydney in the Sydney Observatory in Southern Hemisphere. Now, when you are in Southern Hemisphere, now from this location, you would be missing parts of the Northern sky. So here, if I look for the uh, Polaris North Star, then it, the North Star will be in the part of the sky that um, that will never rise from this location. So let me turn off the ground again and... Uh, yeah. And this is the horizon, anything below that, that's not actually in the sky. And let me find the Big Dipper. Okay, so that's the Big Dipper. So, so I'm just gonna advance the time a little bit with the atmosphere off so that you can see the, the would-be location of stars throughout a day. And the, so in some sense, these stars are still going around this North Pole or the uh, nor North Star, but as they go around, um, the, the stars in the asterism of Big Dipper, they, uh, they barely rise a little bit above the horizon, but never quite enough that you would recognize it as a Big Dipper. So, so yeah, so if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, um, you wouldn't, <laughs> 
so it depends on how far south you are. If you're just below equator, then you couldn't see Big Dipper. But if you are far, far enough south, then you would never see the Big Dipper. So this is actually one of the interesting things. And I think you could do this as part of one of the assignments to, uh, assignments this week. Um, so uh, a lot of cultures that are based in the Southern hemisphere, like the Pacific Islander groups, uh, they have their own uh, star lures. And a lot of them are based on uh, stars and constellations that you can see from South. And I think if you're in the Southern hemisphere and let's say you imagine you are an ancient sailor and you're trying to navigate, you can't see the North Star, so you wouldn't be using it to navigate. Uh, there's something called the Southern Cross that, uh, uh, that people use to navigate. Don't know if I would recognize it. I think this might be Southern Cross. Uh, you know what, let me not try it because I don't think I would actually know. This, this might be the Southern Cross. I think, uh, maybe, <laughs> let me see if uh, this has a dot on cross. Um, okay, that's galaxy, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I won't be able to recognize dot on cross because <laughs> um, it's one of the things I don't have personal experience of seeing. Um, but the nice sky in the Southern hemisphere, it just looks different because uh, some of the stars that you will see are different stars altogether. And in fact, one of the, what's labeled as uh, Regal Centaurus, this or Alpha Centauri is the name I prefer. Um, it's one of the stars that's closest to, to us. It's uh, only 4.4 light years away. It's, uh, um, and this star is not visible in most parts of Northern hemisphere. You can only see this from Southern Hemisphere. 